um, we'll start. Good morning, one and all. I welcome you all to a, today's webinar on innovation in baking and uh, baking technology and entrepreneurship. With us today, we have three eminent speakers, and the speakers are Dr. M. M. Krishna, former chairman and managing director, Modern Food Industries India Limited, Hyderabad. I welcome you, sir. And we have with us Mr. Sudhir Neema, Chief Development and Quality Officer, Britannia Industries Limited, Bengaluru. We welcome you, sir. And with us, we have uh, Mr. B. V. S. Mani, Director, Operations, Unibic India, Private Limited, Bengaluru. I welcome you also, sir. I also take this opportunity to welcome all the AFSTM member, present and past EC member, and students and staff who have joined online on YouTube and also the industry personals, academicians, and my fellow colleagues who have taken time to attend this webinar. And today's webinar is a very important topic and an interesting one also. Since India's largest segment in food processing industry nowadays is baking technology, and it offers a huge opportunity for growth, innovation, and job generations. And since it's such an important topic, the webinar today is hosted on this basis. And also with the changing consumer habits and lifestyle, uh, the bakery industry is making an innovative product which are very healthy and can be an alternative to normal treats and snacks, which all the three speakers today would be talking on. And also we will be briefing on how these technologies can help the entrepreneurship. So um, uh, I'm sure all of you are eagerly waiting for this webinar. I now request our president, AFSTI, Dr. Alok Srivatsava, sir, to welcome and say a few words about AFSTI. Thank you, Dr. Nandini Shetty. Uh, it's my honor to uh, be here around uh, with the, all the stalwarts of the industry. And it's very nice to meet and see Dr. M. M. Krishnaji, uh, former CMD of modern food industries, also uh, with Sole in India. So uh, welcome you, sir. Also welcome um, our colleagues from industry, uh, Mr. Sudhir Neemaji, Britannia, and also Mr. VVS Mani from the Unibic uh, Food Industries. Welcome you both for this web web webinar. It is uh, indeed a pleasure to have this uh, webinar focusing on baking technology and entrepreneurship uh, because in current situation, the industry is growing so well, uh, especially the bakery se segments. We would just, our aim here is to connect with the food professionals, especially the youngsters who are pursuing various academic programs in universities, colleges of food science, technology, food engineering, nutrition, so that they get the perspective of the industry uh, straight from the horse's mouth. Because when you are connecting with people who are associated with modern Britannia, Unibic, which are the flagship uh, companies, so it would be, I'm sure that the delegates would get the very good information on this sec sector. So we look forward to hear uh, from these three speakers uh, during coming uh, one and a half hours or so, and which will, which will be focusing on innovation in bakery technology and entrepreneurship. I will just briefly uh, uh, introduce or um, just say a few words about the Association, Association of Food Scientists and Technologists, especially for those youngsters uh, which are not yet member of the association. And I would invite and encourage all those youngsters to join the association to get the benefit out of it. The association, which is almost about 65 years uh, established in 1957, and which, has, which is the largest association dealing with food science, technology, food engineering in India. And uh, we are having over 4,000 members and then which is spread through 38 chapters across India because we wanted to connect it. India is such a huge country. So through these chapters, which are uh, 
based in various universities and colleges across India, North, South, East, West and all. So through these chapters, we are trying to connect various stakeholders of the food science and technology so that we could effectively cater to the needs of these food professionals. We generally conduct uh, annual conferences, uh, which would be national or international, once in a five years, and national one every every year. Then apart from that, we va can conduct various uh, lectures like the, this webinar. And apart from headquarters, which is at Mysore, at Central Food Technological Research Institute, CFTRI, as I told, we have 38 chapters in all these campuses across the country. So they also conduct several of such similar kind of programs like seminar conferences. Apart from this, uh, association encourages the food professionals, youngsters, experts in the field by conferring them with the various fellowships and various awards uh, annually. And this, these will be all available for members they can also log in to our website afst.org and importantly the association publishes two uh, very good journals one focusing on the academics like where each or uh, any one of the professional can publish the findings of the, their r d which is journal of food science and technology jfst which is very which is the top rated journal uh, not only in india but across the world in the area of the food science and technology so and then apart from that we have the techno commercial the journal of indian food industry uh, ifi mag which is publish which publishes most of the industrial and technical information dealing with the food science and te te technology so i encourage uh, all these members who have joined and who are part of this webinar to get the membership and those membership can be either through the website or you can contact us through our phone, uh, which is available on the site, or you can also connect it through the chapters, which are associated uh, uh, in all these campuses of colleges and universities. In this year, we are having few plans, which would also encourage you to join this association, which is basically we are trying to promote the incubation incubations which are having some uh, any of you uh, if you have certain ideas you want to uh, make it fruitful make it into a product shape make it tangible form we would like to connect your ideas with the institutions like uh, niftem cft tri ICT, various zones so that you get the access of those expertise facilities pilot plant so that your ideas can come into the market so that kind of approach we will be having it and also we are also trying to connect the placement wherein all this industry database and also the database of the students we would like to connect them so that it helps them to get the proper placement in that so these are the several activities of our association and I'm sure that uh, once you join that, you will get the benefit of uh, those association. So with this brief about the association, now I hand over to uh, Dr. Asutos Inamdarji to kindly introduce the first speaker before uh, Dr. Murli Krishnaji takes over for his talk. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Alok, for a um, good introduction about the association to the budding uh, professionals in the food industry. Uh, so it's my uh, privilege and honor to introduce our first speaker of the day, Mr. Uh, M. Murli Krishna. Mr. M. Murli Krishna is a graduate in agriculture from uh, Andhra University, followed by uh, post-graduation uh, post uh, from CFTR MISO. And he has been awarded the PhD degree by IARI in 1968. He has also been to Kansas University for the advanced baking and science technology course and also in the advanced food extrusion technology. He has over 50 years experience with food and agro processing industries in India as well as abroad. 
Uh, he has worked as chairman and managing director of two public sector companies, uh, Modern Food Industries India Limited, which we all know is the India's biggest bread manufacturing company, and uh, Northeast Regional Agricultural Mar uh, Marketing Corporation, which is famously known as uh, NERMAC. Uh, Mr. Krishna, after taking over these uh, public sector companies, has contributed significantly in turning around these uh, companies into healthy and profitable enterprises. Uh, his concern and commitment towards improving the nutritional status of the underprivileged led to extensive work on science-based nutrition solutions for, for improving the health status of uh, health uh, status of the country and the wellness of the bottom of the pyramid population through affordable, acceptable, and nutritious bakery and allied processed food products. Dr. Krishna continued to work in the area of affordable nutrition uh, with multinational orga organizations like DuPont and Soybean Export Council where henceforth uh, he extensively on nutritionally and functionally based applications with soya protein in ingredients in processed foods and widely promoted the use of soya as an affordable and high quality protein for food and nutrition products in South and Southeast Asia. He is a professional member of Indian uh, Institute of Food uh, Technologist USA and life member of many associations including uh, our association AFSPI. To his credit, he has several awards, uh, the prominent being uh, Dr. V. Subramaniam Memorial Industrial Achievement Award, Dr. H. A. Parapia Memorial Oration Award, Outstanding Alumnus Award of CFTRI, and also he has uh, been awarded with the Lifetime uh, Achievement Award for his outstanding contribution in the area of food science by the International Union of Food Science and Technology, uh, uh, which is uh, IUFOS in 2018. Dr. Krishna earlier served as a member of Research Council at CFTR Mysore and has also worked on several government and professional committees on food processing. Dr. Krishna has been recognized in 2013 by International Food Science, Science uh, Certification Commission as a certified uh, food scientist. So with this uh, vast experience and uh, achievements, I think uh, all the students uh, will be more than eager to listen to his uh, uh, wisdom, uh, word of words of wisdom, and uh, take it inspiration uh, for the future of their career. So uh, now I invite uh, Dr. Murli Krishna to talk on the topic new and emerging developments in the baking industry. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Ashutosh, for this uh, long introduction. Dr. Alok Srivastava, Dr. Ashutosh Enambar, Dr. Nandini Shetty, my friend Sudhir Nema, and Mr. Vivius Mani, very distinguished participants, captains of the industry, future captains of the industry, that's the students in the making of the future captains of the industry, and friends. <clears throat> At the outset, I wish to profusely thank our association, AFSTI, for inviting me to speak today on the topic of developments in the baking industry, new and emerging developments in the baking industry. I am indeed uh, privileged and honored to do this. And uh, when I start my presentation with uh, this subject, I would like to submit that to cover the entire portfolio of bakery products, the developments in the bakery products arena is uh, a very, very tough task and a time consuming task. And I would therefore uh, would like to remain focused on the development, some of the developments that have taken place since inception in the bread and allied products industries. As we know, the global bakery market two years back was US dollar 454 billion size. Some of the surveys have projected this market to grow by 2026. 
to US dollar 673 billion at an estimated CAGR of 7.2%, compounded annual growth rate of 7.2%. In fact, bakery industry is one of the largest segments of the food processing industry worldwide in terms of value, in terms of volume, and in terms of reach to the consuming public. The drivers for this growth across the world are the higher consumer awareness of bakery products for health and wellness. There's a lot of awareness of general public consumers on the health and wellness areas in the recent past, and that has been an effective driver for the growth of this industry. The consumer perceptions have changed over the period, and the normal average consumer today is reasonably knowledgeable about health, wellness, nutrition, and other areas that affect him directly or indirectly in terms of his health and well being. And that has been a reasonable driver for the growth of this industry worldwide in terms of uh, delivering nutritionally fortified and nutritionally balanced processed food products like bakery products. And we know in the last couple of decades, the standards of living worldwide have improved by leaps and bounds and the higher disposable incomes have become an important factor for large consumption of bakery products, packaged bakery products by the public worldwide. <clears throat> if you look at the Indian scenario, the current market for bakery products is estimated at US dollar 7.2 billion, because this includes all bakery products, the bread, allied products, biscuits, cookies, cakes, confectionery, and all these products are included in the 7.2 billion market size. And it is projected to exceed $12 billion in the next two years at a projected compounded annual growth rate of 9.3%. That means India is growing much faster than the rest of the world in terms of consumption of bakery products. When we come to bread and allied products, the current market size for bread, buns, rolls, pizza bases, and all similar type of products is uh, 640 million currently, and it is projected uh, by 2024 to one, overcast one billion in its value. It's a, it is a growing faster than the rest of the bakery products at 10.7%. That's the projected annual growth rate. <clears throat> I think I can't handle it. Uh, if we look at the evolutionary bread market, bread, bread activity, bread industry in India, bread making was essentially a, a, a retail shop, bake shop type of activity in metros, semi-metros, and semi-urban areas of the country till 1960s. The small bakeries, the sweet bakeries, which were largely operated by single, by one individual or two individuals to cater to the small market around that unit. The consumption was largely by the, before independence, by the British, Britishers who were resident in India as a breakfast and as a, um, as a main item of food for their uh, regular daily diet. The years 1965 to 1975, post-independent period, 
particularly in the mid 60s to mid 70s, was a major growth phase for the bread industry. The government of India took a major step to establish mechanized bread making units across the country. Prior to this, mechanized bread making, large scale bread making uh, units were located in Northern India, in Delhi, particularly by Britannia and another company called Nandi Bread. These, these were the uh, popular prevailing brands of bread in, in 1960s in Northern India, particularly the Delhi region. In Southern India, mechanized bakery, large scale production of bread and like products was largely concentrated in Chennai by Spencer and Company. So these were the large baking operations. The rest of them, the number of bakery shops in Bangalore area or other metropolitan areas were small and medium sized bakeries operated by the individuals. But 1975 saw a major growth phase for the bread industry when government took a major step to set up mechanized automatic bakeries in 13, 13 locations in India. These were imported automatic bakeries set up in different areas in the country, largely to diversify our eating habits from rice to wheat. <clears throat> During that period, the country was deficient in rice and was unable to meet the full requirements of rice for the population. And the government saw a need to diversify the food habits by introducing wheat in the form of a processed product like bread, buns, and rolls, etc. And this effort by the government was a huge success and it transformed the bread eat, eating habit across the country, particularly in non-wheat non consuming areas like the Southern India, the Eastern India, and partly the Western India. And today, we will be surprised that the largest per capita consumption of bread is not in Delhi or not in India, but in the state of Kerala in India. That was the transformation that was possible with the efforts by setting up large scale bakery units, which served as an impetus for the private sector to set up large scale units in those regions, as well as expand the existing large bakeries with additional capacity in different locations in the country. So by 1970s, the consumer perception of bread had changed. It was earlier considered food for the sick and convalescent, and it is today considered a convenient, safe food product, which delivers, apart from health and wellness, the much more much needed nutrition for the city, for the consumers. So it is now a staple food among the large cross-section of people in the country. <clears throat> At the turn of the century, as we entered the 21st century, the product profiles have undergone significant metamorphosis to match the changing consumer perceptions. Consumer is today looking for a safe, organoleptically matching his requirements, differentiated products, delivering specific nutritional and health benefits. So companies have come out with products which meet these change, changing consumer perceptions about bread and other allied products, which they consume as staples at home. Some of the examples of nutritionally fortified products are high protein, high fiber, 
and fortified products with micronutrients like essential vitamins and minerals. And therefore, the traditional white bread culture has gradually given way to bread made with inclusion of health promoting ingredients to provide more protein, more dietary fiber, and other nutrients together with possible nutraceutical benefits to the people. What are these changes, the trends, consumer trends, product trends, driven by the consumer preferences? One is reduce, reduce sugar and fat. Today's consumers can feel that sugar and excess sugar and excess fat are not desirable. And they consider these as positively harmful for their health and well being. So, with that type of uh, consumer preference, companies have started producing low sugar, low fat type of products. Even products with no added sugar have come into the marketplace. And these products, uh, together with products with reduced trans fat claims, trans fat, which was coming into the product through hydrogenated fat, which was an important ingredient in the bakery products, has been found to be unhealthy and carcinogenic. And FSSA has put a limit on trans fat in different food products, including bakery products. And gradually, they would be taking away the trans fat from the list of ingredients. So reduced sugar and fat products are becoming popular. With a, with a label of free from trans fats or free from cholesterol and other, other undesirable constituents. Then the next uh, type of differentiation in products is enhanced nutrition delivery. <clears throat> because of the enormous awareness of uh, health and wellness attributes among the consuming public, there is a high demand for nutrition delivery through products like bread. And uh, the, the nutrition delivery, both in terms of macronutrients like protein, also fiber enrichment, enriching the fruit, the product with fruits and nuts, and essential micronutrients. These are, this is the profile that is generally built in products with position for enhanced nutrition delivery. <clears throat> now for the last couple of decades, one or two decades, there has been a, <clears throat> a large, uh, I won't say campaign, but a sort of activity among the public and among the uh, industry, among the scientists and among the food stakeholders of the food industry segment as a whole to substitute animal-based ingredients by plant-based ingredients. Plant protein-based ingredients are becoming very, very popular. The plant protein-based analogs, like the meat analogs, are the, are the egg type of products, analogs for the egg type of products are becoming more and more popular because of the large scale uh, transition of the consuming public from meat eating to veganism or vegetarianism. Of course, in the Indian context, dairy products are still considered under the green dot of FSSI. They are no longer considered as animal products. Products like milk and milk products are considered as accepted vegetarian products. But the rest of the world looks at them as animal origin products and try to substitute with the plant-based substitutes or ingredients. 
and plant protein based ingredients are becoming more popular as substitutes for animal products including eggs in bakery products there is a large demand from the bakery industry worldwide to substitute egg and egg based products like egg yolk or egg white by plant based protein ingredients <clears throat> So this is another driver of change that is going to take place. We may, in, in times to come, find cakes without containing egg. Already egg-free cakes are, are becoming popular in India, but across the table, across the industry segment, we may have eggs replaced by protein, other plant protein-based ingredients to, to offer the required functionality, and the required nutritional delivery through the products. Another popular consumer demand that has come up is products with longer shelf life. Particularly this type of consumer requirement has come in with the onset of the COVID-19 phenomena during the early 2020s. When going out for shopping has become a constraint, people would like to go to the shop once in a week and buy the groceries for the whole week. And they found that products like bread will be a constraint for them because of limited shelf life. Therefore, the demand, the changing consumer demand for a longer shelf life products even for products like breads, rolls, etc. This is uh, a, a condition that, that is uh, achievable by the industry, not by increasing the level of usage of preservatives like calcium propionate, but by maintaining, upgrading the levels of hygiene and sanitation in the bakery plants to match the ultimate requirements of uh, almost free from any microbial spores or microbial load inside the bakehouse. And that would largely contribute to longer shelf life of the bakery products like bread and rolls. This is uh, uh, a, a phenomenon that is already taking place thanks to FSSAI and other uh, regulatory organizations which have put stringent conditions for the manufacturing of food products. Most of the bakery products, the medium and the large scale units have upgraded their hygiene and sanitation standards to a level where post-process contamination of the baked product is minimized, leading to longer shelf life of the baked and packaged product. Another important phenomena that has uh, come up in relation to the consumer, the trends in consumer requirements, is the flavors that enhance immunity. Post COVID situation in the country, the average consumer who might have had no knowledge of any nutrition or, or health and wellness parameters is now reasonably knowledgeable of immunity and immunity promoting foods. You talk to an average consumer at the supermarket, he says he's looking for, for a food product that improves his immunity status. And therefore the manufacturers have uh, come out with products containing immunity boosting ingredients like spices and condiments, in several processed products, including bakery products. And the use of uh, spices and condiments like ginger, turmeric, citrus ingredients, etc., have largely increased in the recent past, in, even, in bake, even among bakery products. You know, for example, turmeric. Turmeric is generally regarded as very healthy, antibiotic, anti many, many things, but today it is regarded as excellent for immunity. 
in terms of reducing the cyclokine storms in our immune system and maintaining a healthy immune system in the body. Turmeric consumption has increased by leaps and bounds in various processed foods, including smoothies containing turmeric. Turmeric-based smoothies are becoming popular even in outlets like uh, um, large coffee outlets which serve various types of other beverages, including smoothies. And uh, the export of turmeric has also gone up remarkably high in the last two to three years because of the uh, the, the sound scientific-based belief that turmeric is uh, good for improving the immunity status among individuals. <laughs> so there is another phenomenon that is growing very widely, um, is the free of certain ingredients or certain constituents of the food. So free of what? Today, people believe that gluten is not a desirable constituent for them to consume through bakery products or other wheat-based products. They demand gluten-free. The demand for gluten-free type of products is growing. Though I personally have reservations on uh, the gluten-free type of products, you know, it, it all depends on the level of gluten intolerance that we have among the genetics, among the genetics of our population. In India, I believe the celiac disease occurrence is uh, very, very, very small compared to the Western countries. And therefore, the concerns of gluten-free type of products may not be very, very uh, alarming. Lactose-free is another phenomenon that people are looking for. They want milk products, but lactose-free products. Because of uh, lactose intolerance, again, among a very small section of population. So gluten-free and lactose-free, if we look back, gluten wheat has been our, our, our food, our staple for several centuries in India. People have lived on wheat, chapatis as a staple in, in large parts of the world for centuries. And if we look at the occurrence of celiac disease, is a very, very small percentage. And therefore, the concern that is voiced for gluten-free type of products may not be very appropriate. Then coming to lactose, yes, lactose intolerance is a, a, a phenomenon that occurs, again, in a very small section of population. Milk and milk products have not only been source of health and wellness for us, but that milk was a part of Indian India's culture for several, several, several centuries dating back to the epic era of Lord Krishna. So for Indians, milk is their culture, and it is extremely difficult to delete milk from any of the, any of the processed or unprocessed type of foods that we take at home. Lactose-free, is a requirement for a very small section of the population. And for that section of people, we don't have to go mainstream to produce lactose-free, all products lactose-free and gluten-free, but a small part of the production can be lactose-free for those individuals who are lactose intolerant. Low salt is another demand that is rising because of the belief that because of the rising awareness of the effects of high consumption of salt on cardiac diseases and general health in particular, sugar-free, fat-free, no salt is going to be the order of tomorrow's processed foods and even food that we cook at home. The FSHI may soon be coming out with a label declaration, front of the label declaration, with a traffic signal type of projection to, to project foods high in sugar, high in fat, and high in salt with a red, amber, 
or green signals to indicate the level of haze in the product. So there is a lot of uh, uh, regulatory, uh, regulatory imposition as well as uh, general consumer perception of uh, these uh, ingredients not being too healthy. So future products, future bakery products or other processed food products will invariably low in salt, in sugar and fat. And when we look at sugar free or no added sugar, the substitutes that we use are, um, um, to, to replace sugar, but to re retain the sweet taste of the product, like uh, taking the course to use of uh, sugar alcohols, etc., or non calorie sweeteners, natural sweeteners like stevia, they will be, I think, occupying a large part of the ingredient table in future products. <clears throat> So looking back at the consumer perceptions post-COVID, there will be a significant transformation in the consumer perceptions and the type of products based on the present consumer requirements and uh, their uh, consumer demand. They are health and wellness-based products, mainly protein and dietary fiber enriched products. Products that are that deliver immune nutrients like antioxidants or like uh, nutraceuticals like curcumin, ginger-based products, and other spices and condiments that may contribute to immuno benefits. Food safety in terms of uh, uh, the microbiological food safety of the product leading to longer shelf life, functional and natural ingredients, the label, clean label type of products, and another thing is allergen free. You know, every food has some allergy for somebody or the other. Wheat has uh, the wheat allergy, the milk allergy, and soya allergy. Every food product has some allergy, but for some certain group of individuals may not be universal. But the consumers read the labels that the product is free of these allergens. And allergen, allergen declaration has become a regulatory requirement for the food products. <clears throat> so what are these uh, immunity uh, type of immunity enhancing type of uh, ingredients that go to uh, uh, the major ingredients in the processed foods like bread and uh, like products. Protein is one of the most important thing followed by vitamin C, vitamin D, and vitamin E, zinc, iron, and selenium among the minerals. These are largely referred to as immunoprotective or immunoboosting nutrients. And the future focus of most of the processed food can, foods will contain these ingredients <clears throat> to ensure that the food that they are marketing is also good for immunity. It is not possible within this limited time to deal with all the immunonutrients, which will be the future um, focus of uh, processed food arena. But let us um, briefly discuss about the most important constituent that goes to build our health and also our immunity is the protein. Bread, regular bread is not a source of protein, a good source of protein. It just delivers three and a half to four grams of protein per serving of about 50 grams a day. But more than the protein delivery, if we look at the protein quality that we consume through bakery products, the protein quality score in terms of protein digestibility corrected amino acid score is only 0 0.33. 0 0.33 is a very, very low score compared to milk, which is one. The meat or the egg protein, which is one. The soy protein isolate, which is one. So 0.33 protein quality score indicates its deficiency in certain essential amino acids. Acute deficiency 
in certain essential amino acids and also the digestibility corrected scores. So in order to make bread as a meaningful source of protein for the consumers, we need to not only fortify the product with protein, but also build the protein quality in the product by taking recourse to ingredients with high protein scores, protein quality scores. And what are these high protein quality containing, uh, protein quality containing ingredients? These are the dairy products, the egg products are among the plant-based, plant-derived protein sources, the soy protein. These are the protein sources that will go largely to enhance the protein density and delivery to the product, as well as ensure a higher protein quality score for these products. And such a protein should also be not only effective, but economical for using as an ingredient because for products like bread and rolls, they are very price sensitive products. So these are these will become staple foods across the sections of population. Not only the top of the pyramid population, but a part of the pyramid population also use bread and rolls as a staple food for them. And therefore the need for economics by well, the, the, the controlling the prices of these products to be affordable to all sections of population. And therefore, we should look at ingredients that are price competitive. And in this uh, arena, soy protein scores over all other sources of protein in terms of protein per kg protein cost. Of course, these figures are about one year old, and therefore, you may not correlate with today's high prices, but relatively if we compare, soy protein per kilogram cost is 75 rupees compared to wheat protein, which is 200 rupees, and meat protein, which is 555 rupees, and uh, milk protein, which is uh, more than 1,000 rupees per kilogram of pure protein. So the economics, affordability, and uh, availability of ingredients suggest that perhaps soy and soy protein ingredients are ideal for use in protein enrichment of bakery products, which will be the, uh, the demand for, from the consumers, which is already a demand and it will be a growing demand in times to come. <clears throat> I have explained the protein quality scores for different products. And if we look at bread, it is only 0.33. And if we, if we really look at wheat, the protein quality score is 0 0.4 compared to one of soy protein or one of dairy protein and one of egg protein. Why this protein score of wheat is so low? Because of its deficiency in essential amino acids, particularly lysine. And if we look at wheat gluten, Wheat gluten has the lowest score of 0 0.25. And therefore, the imperative need to fortify wheat products with the ingredients high in, in protein density, as well as in high in protein quality, so that the consumer will get benefit of a good protein with adequate quantity of protein delivered from each serving of the food. This is a table that we have um, computed to derive at the amino acid scores and protein digestibility corrected amino acid scores. It will be too time consuming to go through it, I'll skip it. But in general, if we uh, fortify whole wheat bread with 6% defected soya flour as the protein source, the protein quality score of of a whole wheat bread, so I have fortified whole wheat bread, goes up by 39%. You see, 0.33 score becomes 0.46. Similarly, with tortilla chapatis, with 6% fortification with the defatted soya flour, the protein quality score the enhancement is almost 
So this is uh, the way that we deal with high protein products to meet the immunity requirements of people, to deliver higher protein for their health and wellness, and at the same time ensure that we give them not just grams of protein per serving, but the best quality of protein that will enhance their internal health and wellness. The other immunonutrients like vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, zinc, selenium, and iron, already many, many food products are claiming immunity, good for immunity through these uh, ingredients used in these products. Even bakery products, some of the bread that are marketed in Delhi area, they say with immunonutrients added. And they add zinc, iron, and selenium in addition to vitamin C. <clears throat> there are antioxidant benefits and immune enhancing nutraceuticals that also can be delivered through uh, value added bakery products because these uh, antioxidants and immune enhancing nutraceuticals like lycopene, beta carotene, flavonoids, and phenols, prebiotics, and probiotics. Of course, probiotics poses a practical problem for including in bakery products because they may get inactivated during the baking operation. Omega-3 fatty acids are also gaining ground as uh, uh, nutrients for general health and wellness and for improving the immunity of the uh, individuals. The immune enhancing nutraceuticals like carotenoids, flavonoids and phenols, they have a powerful role in regulating cytokine storms in the immune system and reduce the chances of uh, the immunity compromising, compromising of immunity among the individuals. So these are gaining high importance and ground as ingredients in various food products, including bakery products. And in future, these ingredients may figure very, very prominently on the labels of various processed foods. <clears throat> Among the other requirements, drivers of growth, people's expectations for processed foods and processed wheat products like bread and rolls will be all natural. They don't want any synthetic ingredients, including preservatives. And therefore, it is a challenge for the product development scientists to develop products with no other synthetic ingredients, all natural ingredients, yet maintain the same organoleptic scores for these products. The, to marry taste and health are very, very difficult phenomena. Whatever tastes very great need not be very healthy. But to bring in taste and health together is a real challenge for the future product development scientists in the area of food processing and particularly in the baking industry. So we need to come out with the consumer expectations tomorrow of offering a clean label product with all natural ingredients. Some food products are already coming out with all natural um, claim, but maybe some of the synthetic uh, ingredients are still used, but in a very, very small way. Particularly the freedom from synthetic colors, preservatives and other food additives is gaining a large ground. People don't want synthetic colors anymore because the average persons are now, now reasonably aware that most of the synthetic colors used without limit in certain rural areas among the sweetmeats, et cetera, they are positively carcinogenic and uh, they, they cause the health of individuals. And therefore there is a general demand for going uh, without any synthetic colors. Preservatives is the next item that may go out of these uh, labels very soon. And other food additives, particularly synthetic food additives. So a clean label type of product will be a future requirement of uh, 
the bakery industry in general, in particular, and food processing industry in general. <clears throat> there is another important uh, uh, concern among the people, among the consumers, among all the people across the globe, which, which concerns every possible consumer, which concerns every possible industry, whether it is a small, medium, or large, it doesn't matter, but it is of universal significance, it is the environment sustainability and in relation to baking industry. Baking industry also contributes significantly to carbon footprint, though it's not very high, but still it is a significant contributor through the raw materials that we use. Every raw material comes with a carbon footprint. The processing that we do, the time temperature regimes that we follow in the bakeries are nothing but contributors to carbon footprint. The distribution of bakery products as well as what the consumer does at home before he consumes bread. He either keeps it in the refrigerator, which also contributes to carbon footprinting, and, and subsequently he does the toasting of bread, which also contributes to carbon footprint before that product is consumed. Therefore, bread is not an exception among the food products in terms of environment sustainability and protection of the environment. If we really look at the carbon footprint of foods per 100 kilo, kilo calories of intake, if we look at the carbon footprint generated, bread and allied products generate only 50 grams of carbon dioxide per 100 kilo calories of consumption. Whereas if we look at milk, it is 350 grams of carbon dioxide per 100 kilocalories to milk. And eggs is even higher, 440 kilocalories of carbon dioxide per 100 kilocalories of food. And if we talk of canned products or those frozen products, it is even, even much higher and it is as high as 800 grams of carbon dioxide for just 100 kilocalories that we derive from these uh, processed canned or frozen vegetables. This being the situation, there is uh, a responsibility among the industry driven by the consumer requirement as well as a social responsibility for the industry to reduce the carbon footprint even much further. So as a baking, baking industry, what we can do to the extent possible is to replace, is to work on replacing animal-based ingredients like egg ingredients, the egg, egg white, egg albumin, the, egg, the whole egg, or the dairy-based in, ingredients like SMP, WMP, the caseinates, the whey protein, etc., and substitute by plant-based ingredients. This is not going to make the carbon footprint zero, but it will reduce the carbon footprint very substantially. So it is uh, within our control to at least contribute that much reduction of carbon footprint for the future generations by reformulating our products with plant-based, as much of plant-based ingredients as possible at maintaining the taste profiles and the organoleptics, the functional, the textural and other requirements intact as per the consumer requirement. The next important area where we can contribute a great deal is the energy that we use. You know, baking is nothing but time temperature regimes, the temperatures that are maintained right from the mixing, the low temperature that we use in mixing, or the highest temperature that we use in baking, they all contribute to carbon footprint generation. So the transition, we need to transition 
from non-renewable energy sources, the hydrocarbon fuel sources, to more renewable sources of energy. Can we do this and achieve the temperatures of 250 degrees Celsius in a baking oven for baking bread or maybe 40 to 50 degrees in the proof, proof box? Is it possible with solar energy or other renewable energy sources like the air generated energy, the geothermal energy, and so on? Yes, it is a challenge, but it is not impossible. Yet it is not impractical also. It is the challenge for the scientists to base more and more of our energy requirements in baking industry on renewable energy sources. Is it possible? You know, it is not just the heat that is required for baking that we are talking of. The energy that is used indirectly in the in the form of lighting, in the form of ventilation, in several, several other forms where we use electricity. Can we convert that from the fossil fuels to the renewable sources like the solar energy? This will become not just a wish, but a requirement as we go by. Because we all know that every one degree centigrade rise in temperature will cost heavily in terms of our total food production globally. And in India, it is estimated in the next 10 years, the temperature grows beyond one degree centigrade. The average temperature, our food production will come down by five to 6%. This is not an acceptable condition for India because our population is rising to match, not match, but beat the Chinese population. If our production shrinks, because of the carbon footprint that we are generating, it is a gross injustice to the generation next. Therefore, we need to do, we need to take it on a mission mode and see that we trans transform or we transit from non-renewable sources to renewable sources to reduce the carbon footprint in the production of bakery food products. I have, uh, I think, covered the future baking scenario, the consumer perceptions, and what the industry can do to meet the consumer requirements in terms of health and wellness, and the newly evolving concerns of immunity development, and the national, societal, and the global requirement of uh, reducing the carbon footprint among uh, uh, by the industry. <clears throat> to sum up, bakery industry in general has done a marvelous service to the people, not only in this country, but globally. If we look at what the baking industry has done in India, for the common man, for the person, what Dr. Prakash used to say, reaching the unreachables. If we look at the situation that has arisen as a result of uh, uh, the, the cyclone that took place in the coastal area uh, of uh, southern India about 15 years back, what we call tsunami, tsunami that occurred, millions of people have been dislodged because of tsunami on the coastal area of southern India. They were hungry. There was no food that could be reached. There was no way that they could feed themselves and keep alive. And it was CFTRI, which has risen to the occasion, along with other philanthropic organizations. But CFTRI has done a remarkable job in producing ready-to-eat food in such large quantities to reach the people in the fastest mode and feed them with not just food, but food with nutrition. I remember the pilot plant at CFTRI FNDCT division worked round the clock, not just as an experimental equipment, but as commercial equipment to produce 
soya fortified protein enriched cookies packaged in millions of packets taken to the coastal area and delivered to the children who were starving and this is what sustained the children in those difficult days of tsunami and this is what um, we we dr prakash used to refer as reaching the unreachables with the food with the nutrition delivery government of india has done a human service to the children in the urban slum areas during the 1970s and 1980s by providing them with bread enriched with protein i remember i was a part of that system and we used to produce bread with soy fortification to contain 12% protein which today we say is difficult to produce it may impact the volume of the loaf and the texture of the loaf but it was possible by using high uh, efficient uh, emulsifiers like sodium stearate lactalate as a surface active agent to maintain the bread volume as well as bread structure and texture and deliver 12% protein along with the vitamins and minerals to slum children it is not a surprising fact that some of these children who were beneficiaries of this scheme receiving high protein bread every day in their school or the anganwadi may be occupying high positions in politics or in administration or scientists or in all walks of life today so bakery industry in india has done human service to the society at large to the people in general providing them products with nutrition with the guaranteed nutrition delivery and with health and wellness attributes delivered to the consumers and today we are trying to meet additional needs of immunity protective nutrients to the consumers and it has a great role to play tomorrow in uh, further fortifying the belief that bakery products are the best products for maintaining health and wellness of future generations thank you very much for this opportunity maybe i have crossed my limit time limit by 5 minutes i am sorry for it and uh, thanks everyone uh thank you mr murli krishna for a wonderful and letting talk uh, he has covered uh, uh, a large aspects of uh, bakery industry and uh, has given some inputs uh, 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 expressing that cag cag of almost 9.3% is there for the bakery industry he has also spoken about the changing consumer trends uh, wherein the plant based ingredients uh, with longer shelf life and the flavors with enhanced immunity are the need of the need of the consumers wherein uh, the present entrepreneur should work on He has also emphasized the focus on the foods for uh, certain po population uh, who are looking for gluten-free products, lactose-free products, sugar-free products, fat-free products, and also the uh, so uh, less salt products. He has emphasized the importance of soya protein and uh, also the economics how uh, it works uh, with the uh, uh, you know, soya protein enrichment uh, being a very cheap source of the protein with a very high quality protein uh, uh, going uh, going the way. and also he has told about the enhancing the quality of protein by uh, for uh, formulating the food products based on upon the soya protein source which can which can enhance the pca s score score, score of uh, regular staple and the bakery products he has also emphasized the uh, environmental sustainability of the bakery products and uh, uh, emphasized on the use of the uh, ingredients to lower down the carbon footprints and uh, he has put the challenge uh, of the bakery industry as bringing the food and health together so that is a big challenge uh, what the industry has and uh, should work towards achieving that and uh, lastly he has emphasized that bakery has uh, potential to reach to the unreachable and uh, he has explained it through the example of the cftri where in uh, the protein rich cookies were supplied to to the people uh, affected by tsunami in chennai and uh, during many other natural calamities uh i hope all the listeners have been uh, very much enriched with the knowledge of uh, the current status of the industry and we thank uh, mr muli krishna for his valuable time uh, and concern for all the students and the members of the fst and and in general participants who are there uh, listening to us thank you very much sir uh moving forward uh, the next speaker of the day uh, mr sudhir nima one of the prominent name in the baking industry 
Uh, he's a food technologist and he brings over uh, 29 uh, years of corporate R&D experience from various uh, reputed companies. He is passionate about delivering exciting consumer experience and building product portfolios for newer categories and also creating healthier choices and product possibilities to address malnutrition and anemia. Mr. Sudhir Rima is a Chief Development and Quality Officer at Britannia Industries Limited and based out of Bangalore. Of course, his profile is kept very short, uh, being so humble, but his outputs uh, in the Britannia industry, uh, we are aware, are too large to be uh, to, uh, talking in a small time uh, here. Uh, so without wasting any time, I we invite uh, Mr. Sudhir Nima to speak on the topic. What is going to address today is uh, bakery, a significant macro snacking opportunity. Over to you, sir. Right. Uh... Good morning, morning everyone. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, or I'll just put up my video just to ensure that it is okay. Okay, good. So thank you. Thank you very much for a kind introduction. Uh, I need to share my slides, please. Uh, Dr. Krishna, I think you'll have to stop sharing your slide. Okay, good. Uh, my slides are visible now. <clears throat> Hello? Yes, yes. Yes, please. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, yes. very good. Very good. Great. So, uh, thank you very much for a uh, kind introduction. And uh, first of all, would like to thank uh, uh, AFSTC President uh, Dr. Alok Srivastava, Nandini, NA, and AFST members for organizing this webinar. And it is my privilege and uh, honor to be part of this uh, webinar today. Okay, so uh, in next about uh, 30 minutes, uh, I'll be sharing my thoughts, perspective, and some of the industry trends which are happening in the bakery. Uh, interestingly, some of these things have been already covered by Dr. Krishna. And uh, wherever it is required, uh, I will skip the slides. So in this presentation, I will be talking about uh, bakery industry perspective, uh, some of the innovations in the bakery which are happening and uh, what is going to be the future for this bakery industry. Some of the key challenges uh, which are there in the bakery industry, because what I believe that in this webinar today, we have uh, uh, participants uh, who are students, participants who are experts in the academia, some of the industry members, it will be relevant for us to talk about some of the challenges what we face. And these challenges can also be the opportunity area for this uh, uh, forum team members to look into as a part of the work program for the future. Uh, moving on, uh, talking about bakery industry, I think uh, it is basically one of the oldest uh, food industry, uh, more than 4,500 uh, BC. Uh, and, and if, it, if we talk about where it was originated, I think uh, from Egypt to Roman to Greek, a lot of uh, evidences are there that uh, you know, in prehistoric days, uh, baking used to be used there. I'm not going to be talking about all the data, but uh, very interestingly, just talking about, uh, you know, because this uh, bakery product uh, used to be very affordable, very low cost, having a very long shelf life, and evidences are there that it used to be used in even in the war by the soldiers uh, to carry as the food which can be consumed. Uh, travelers in 16th and 17th centuries, when they used to travel, they used to carry the bakery products um, for the hunger fill. Talking about India, I think uh, Dr. Krishna talked about, uh, but I think in India, it, it, it came with East India Company. And uh, that's the reason the, the uh, origin of bakery in India is from Kolkata. Uh, so this is about the perspective. Just moving on, uh, talking about uh, global market scenario. Uh, so in this slide, what you see it is that US is number one market for bakery product followed by China. India is number three. And uh, what you see on this is that the per capita consumption, it means that how many kgs of the bakery products are consumed by the people in one year. Uh, 
that's a place where we find very significant opportunity uh, for bakery industry in India today. What we see that, you know, US is, is a complete developed market and hence the consumption of bakery product is very high and it is, it is well penetrated. And because of that, on the x-axis, what you see here is the compounded annual growth. And because of that, the growth rate of the bakery is around two to three percentage on this. Talking about India, uh, it is a developing market. Uh, though the penetration of bakery is very high, it is close to 90 to 92 percentage. It means that it is available uh, and consumed by most of the people in India. And, and the growth rate is pretty high. It is almost uh, growing uh, at about uh, 12 percentage compounded annual growth rate. And opportunities are also very significant on this. Now, the per capita, per capita consumption of bakery products in India uh, is pretty low. And that's opportunity which is there for industries uh, to really look into and saying that, how do you make the bakery products more relevant, more attractive for the consumers so that we can have enhancement in the per capita consumption, which is there for the bakery product. Now, this is about Indian processed food industry. And what you see here is that, uh, you know, this is about uh, the, the uh, bakery, which is here, is in the top 10 food industry in India. And if you see the bar here, which is very small bar, uh, you know, in last about uh, 10 years time, the height of the bar has basically grown very significantly. It means that, you know, versus other industries, uh, some of the industries which you see here are on the decline, some of the industries have basically remained stagnant, more or less, but bakery has been growing at a pretty good and healthy rate. Uh, it means that, you know, the acceptance of the product, the affordability, the kind of innovations which can happen in the bakery, relevant innovations, are making the products more acceptable to consumers. And uh, the future is going to be definitely bright for the bakery industry and also the bakery products which are there in the market today. We are talking about uh, macro snacking. And when we say macro snacking here, uh, you know, there are three categories which are there in this. Number one is definitely about the salty snacks, which are all about the namkeen and chips and extruded products. Number two is about the biscuits and bakery products. And number three is about the chocolate. So these are the three big macro snacking categories which are there in the market today. The market today is around $11 billion uh, and it is expected to grow at about 13.2 percentage compounded annual growth rate and expected to reach in next about six years time to about uh, $23 billion. And when you talk about the bakery, right? Um, as of 2020, right, the, the size of the market in India is about 7.5 US uh, billion dollar, and it is expected to reach to around 13. So it is almost close to double um, uh, in, in about seven years time. Now talking about the segmentations in the bakery, when you talk about the bakery, right, uh, what is bakery all about, right? Typically it comprises of three or four product categories. Definitely bread is number one, uh, biscuit and cookies is number two, cake and pastries is number three. And we talk about the bread, the bread and rusk is basically combined on this. So these are the three big categories, uh, subcategories which are there in the bakery product. And if you look into the global bakery market uh, in terms of, you know, what is the saliency of these subcategories? Definitely the biscuit is around close to 55 to 60 percentage, uh, followed by bread and roll, and then cake and pastries basically is here and the rust. So this is the way the overall bakery product market is segmented globally. And the India trend is more or less similar. It is not very different than what we see in the global market. Now, um, I will be basically spending uh, some time on bread followed by the biscuit because these are the two big categories uh, which are in the market today uh, in India. Now, if you think about the global market, uh, bread, it is definitely basically evolving and the growth is pretty significant in the bread. Um, and we know in India, uh, 10 years back, uh, the, the availability of the bread which used to be there in the market, at the same time, the kind of breads which used to be there versus now, there is a significant change which has happened on this, which is indicating very clearly that the, the bread category is changing, number one, 
bread category is becoming more relevant to consumers. Bread category is basically innovating to meet uh, consumer demands and new spaces which are coming up on that. Now in bread, uh, my perspective is all about saying that, look, you know, we have to be closer to the consumers. Uh, one of the big thing in the bread is that, look, you know, it is, it is uh, pseudo roti or naan, which is typically consumed by Indians. Uh, how do, how can we basically get the bread to the center of plate instead of basically using as, as a sandwich in the breakfast or in other occasions as a bread pakoda, is there any possibility for us to get bread in the center of the plate? so that it becomes part of the meal actually what we are consuming. Um, so I think that's going to be one of the big tasks uh, to the industry bodies uh, to really look into saying that what do we do in the bread so that acceptance of the bread is much more and how can basically bread become the part of the daily life and also the part of the center of the plate on this. Some of the consumer trends uh, which are there in the bread uh, in India are very specifically, first thing is all about premiumization on this. Uh, bread is not like a simple white bread, what we used to see previously. Uh, there are enough of the innovations which, which are happening in the market today. Uh, bread is there uh, with choco chip. Bread is there, which is filled with cream. Bread is there, which is filled with uh, fruit preparations. A lot of innovations are happening on this. And this is the one which is taking the bread to the premium category. So that's number one, it is happening. Number two is all about indulgent experiences, right? So it is not only about you know uh, bread as a base for making something else. The bread itself is becoming a snack or the meal actually. And uh, you know some of the things which I talked about in terms of having the chocolate bread to the fruit bread to the um, uh, you know uh, chocolate cream filled buns. A lot of those things basically happening in the market today. Interestingly, the next one is about the duality of the experiences. Uh, which is all about saying that, hey, you know, is it possible for us to get newer kind of experiences to consumers? Talking about a bread which is having a different kind of texture, filled with something which is soft and chewy. Uh, and these are the things which are going to be the future uh, for the bread industry going forward. Now, bread, we know that is a very convenient food, right? Uh, it does help at home uh, to the housewife or the person who is uh, managing the kitchen. Uh, to incentivize the food. There is a need to have something in the evening. Uh, bread comes very handy on that. Um, and whatever can be done more and more on this, right? Think about sandwiches which are made. Is there any way that there is a possibility of creating a ready to cook sandwich kind of format with the bread, uh, which can help housewife to make the products probably in no time. One of the interesting thing and in the, the consumer insight here is that, look, in India today, uh, though housewife who is the in charge of the kitchen is having significant stress on the time, uh, but at the, at the same time, housewife doesn't basically want to substitute the home cooked food with the readily available processed foods completely. And this is the place where something which comes as a handy, uh, as a convenient food, which can be used to make some meal uh, for the family uh, gets a wider acceptance actually. And also there is a pride of uh, mom, a pride of wife to cook the food for the family and wife or the, the uh, member of the family who's managing the kitchen doesn't want to give away that pride you know, to the processed food completely, at least in the kitchen. So that's a place I think bread can play a very significant role on this. Next one is about health and wellness. I think Dr. Krishna uh, spoke enough on this in terms of the protein bread and a lot of things which are happening. Uh, but just to tell you that, you know, uh, health and wellness will remain as one of the key focus area today and also the tomorrow and next about five years time. Uh, health and wellness, you know, when you talk about, uh, it is about adding the, some of the beneficial ingredients Think about super grains, think about millet, think about whole wheat, think about uh, protein, which Doc talked about, uh, to a lot of other uh, beneficial ingredients, um, which can make bread truly healthy. And then second side is going to be, you know, some of the things which are used in making bread uh, in terms of the additives, in terms of the chemicals which get into making the bread. 
how can we reduce and what what can substitute these additives which can make bread truly natural bread those are the things which are going to be uh, very specifically uh, some of the trends uh, which will be in the market uh, in in next immediate coming years actually uh, next one is about uh, you know it is not only about the geriatric solutions because if you look into india uh, we know that you know aging population is going to be one very significant chunk of the population group in india um, and hence talking about the healthy aging talking about uh, you know the bread uh, which can be suitable for uh, diabetic people to the uh, suitable for uh, people who are having the cardiovascular diseases to uh, bread which can basically have some of the nutraceuticals uh, beyond the fortification of vitamins and minerals those are the things which are going to be uh, uh, future for the bread and 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 the thought and the perspective here is not only about just adding certain things and the, and then claiming on the basis of ingredients i think the future is going to be how do you create something uh, which is scientifically medically proven and also then proven through the clinical researches so that there is evidences which are available to talk about saying that yes this is the perfect solution which is available for healthy uh, aging population group which we have uh, one more thing probably i just want to add here uh, when you're talking about the specific population group which will be also talked about in the subsequent slides but but i think it is also relevant for the bread is about you know uh, some some other uh, population segment think about uh, women think about kids how do you create more excitement in the bread uh, for the kids uh, so that you know it becomes uh, exciting uh, snacking solution for the kids what do we do on that some of these things are going to be pretty relevant going forward on the bread uh now this is all about where where do we stand in the bread uh, what do what do we see in the bread in next 2 to 3 years time and then 5 years and beyond uh, what do we see in the bread uh, category so as we know that this covid pandemic uh, has changed the scenario for certain food category and bread is definitely one among them because of the convenience because of the wider acceptance it has gone deeper into the household and uh, and 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 more acceptable than what it was previously now now i think uh, people are also talking about the health or talking about the fun talking about the sustainability on the bread but talking about the future right um, future is going to be at least in india uh, because when you're talking about the western countries in most of the countries bread is already uh, part of the center of the plate but not in india so is there any possibility of moving this to the center of plate what are the possibilities on the localization of the bread for better acceptance right so think about uh, the kind of uh, breads which we eat uh, in our daily life uh, think about like uh, bread which is uh, a mix of wheat flour with a besan which we call as a messy bread uh, what are the possibilities of having some of these innovations in the marketplace uh, kulcha bread lot of those things are already happening in the market but uh, i see more and more of these things which are localization uh, going deeper into the kitchen at indian household is going to be uh, next to 2 to 3 years kind of trend in the bread industry and i think beyond that and even even during this time frame uh, moving to more and more positive health and positive ingredients and positive story health claims nutraceuticals right is going to be the future for the food industry and also for the bread on this uh talking about biscuit i will be rushing through my slides uh, you know just to catch up on the time when you talk about the biscuit right uh, again there are various kinds of biscuits and there are various ways to look into the segmentation of the biscuits on this and many times you know as a layman or even as basically the person who who, who is in the industry uh there could be some confusion about you know what it is so just to tell you that you know the way consumer looks into this is very different the way technology talks about the segmentation and the biscuit in terms of the farming to the kind of technology which is there on that and some of the thing which i mentioned here on the screen just for you guys to understand and demystify this completely 
So pure, you no know, purely from the consumer side, uh, consumer will look into this as a biscuit or cookies is one one uh, segmentation on this. Second is all about the cracker or salty biscuits. The third is all about the sandwich cream biscuits. Fourth is about the filled cookies, which is basically the cookies which are filled with the liquid cream or chocolate. Uh, fifth is about the tea biscuits, uh, the, the, the biscuits which can be a great accompaniment uh, for the tea or coffee uh, is basically the fifth uh, segmentation which consumer sees it. And the last one is all about the health biscuits. So purely from the consumer side, if you have to really see the biscuit category from the consumer lens, these are the six kind of subcategories, you know, consumer will look into in the biscuit. From the technology point of view, uh, it is all about the, you know, the way it is manufactured. Uh, it is short dough, wherein the fat content is much higher while making the dough. Moisture is much lower. Uh, and hence, gluten doesn't develop in this uh, biscuit technology. Uh, moving to the hard dough and the cracker kind of product. Cracker again can be the enzymatic cracker to the fermented cracker. Those are the kind of technologies which are being talked about on this. Now, once you make a dough, this is all about basically how you make the dough on the technology side on this. Uh, you need to basically form the biscuit. And for that, there are typically the three kinds of things which are being talked about. Uh, one is all about the mold date, where you have got uh, you know biscuit dough, which is pressed against the given design and you get the biscuit design on that. Second is all about the deposited, which is all about the deposited cookies, wire cut. A uh, lot of those things uh, are being talked about in the bakery industry. And the lastly is about the laminated dough, uh, which is uh, sheeted and then it is cut. So these are the typically the three forming technologies which are used in the biscuits. So uh, moving on to the next one. Uh, so some of the consumer trends in the biscuits and cookies. Uh, so first one is all about the health. I think a uh, lot of emphasis is being given uh, on the health in the biscuit. Uh, when you talk about the health, uh, the whole journey started long back, about 10 to 15 years back in the bakery, starting with, you know, how do we remove the trans fat in the biscuit? And, and in fact, Britannia was the first company who removed the trans fat from the whole portfolio <clears throat> quite long back. Uh, from there to talking about the how do you basically get the uh, positive healthier ingredient? Uh, <clears throat> sorry, in the biscuits, uh, and then it is moving to in terms of how do you really make truly healthier by reducing uh, you know sugar, reducing the fat content, re reducing the sodium in the bakery product from this. So this is basically one of the big trend uh, uh, which is shaping the bakery industry uh, as we speak now. Uh, second is all about, you know, apart from the health, uh, just to basically tell that, look, consumers are basically buying the product definitely for the benefit of health, but no one wants to compromise on the experiences. The experiences in terms of the texture of the product, experiences in terms of the kind of flavor, taste, which is delivered in the product on this. And whatever you do on the health, right, if your product is not acceptable sensorially, uh, there will not be any market for those kind of products in this. So texture and flavor, uh, which is again combined with the health, but on its own uh, in the indulgent product uh, is, is going to be one of the key things. So on the texture, right, uh, the current biscuits which are there, how do you really get into some of the newer experiences? Can there be a biscuit which is much more crunchier, biscuit which gives you very different kind of experiences on that? Uh, to different kind of flavors which are there in that. And I'll talk about the flavor in a minute because taste is one of the paramount reason uh, why any consumer will also pick up the product on this. Uh, other one is all about, you know, globalization of the uh, category, which is about some of the uh, innovations which are happening in the global market. Uh, is there any possibility of these innovations also connecting with the consumers and also consumer accepting these innovations? Uh, it's all about the globalization on this. And I think uh, we are already seeing some of these things happening in the Indian market and going forward, a lot of these things will happen. Uh, and also the reason for this today is that, you know, uh, versus about a decade or two decades back, uh, people's awareness about what is happening in the other, other market probably was not so much. 
uh, now people traveling a lot uh, and also with the digital world in, in, in which we are living today, uh, the transit time from any of the innovations which are successful in the other part of the world to reach to India, uh, which used to be about a decade or more than a decade previously, it has come down to probably two and three years now. So a lot of these things you will see that happening in the market. Other thing which is again linked with the health is all about snacking is one of the need. So how do you really get the fruit as a part of snacking and talking about uh, you know some of the vacuum fried fruits, uh, vegetables, banana chips, a lot of those things in a, in a very, very innovative form uh, is going to be basically the uh, consumer trend on this. Talking about the flavor, uh, because anything what you do, uh, flavor becomes the paramount reason for consumer to also pick up the product. And uh, what you see here is that, you know, on the top 10 flavors which are there today, which are trending in the biscuit and bakery industry, chocolate is definitely still remaining as number one, right? Followed by the butter, followed by some of the fruit flavors, milk, vanilla, cheese, and some of the newer experiences which are coming in on this. Think about pineapple, think about, you know, uh, matcha, green tea. A lot of these new experiences are also becoming very prominent now. Now, interestingly, if you think about uh, the kind of products and flavors um, which are going to be relevant and also well accepted by the consumers, definitely we call as a choco bakery. How do you get into the chocolate in the bakery product is going to be one of the key, uh, you know, innovation leg uh, for the bakery industry on this. Chocolate in any form, think about it, right? Uh, it can be in the form of uh, filling, it can be in the form of chips, it can be in the form of uh, putting on the top uh, as enrobing, but chocolate will remain as one of the key innovation platform uh, in the future. The other one which is picking up, which I call as a chizo bakery, which is all about cheese uh, getting into the bakery product, right? And and I think we are well aware about uh, cracker and cheese combination, which goes very well. A lot of innovations in terms of how can cheese get into the various bakery products, bakery categories is going to be a big innovation platform actually going forward. <clears throat> Other one is about the dual flavors. It's all about the duality of two things. Could it be texture? Could it be flavor? But how do you get the two contrasting flavors in a product which are appealing to the consumers? Could also be basically one of the big trend on this. And the next one is about the future futuristic dis, disruption in the category, uh, which is again will happen at the you know intersection of uh, probably two flavors, intersection of two categories which we are having, uh, intersection of basically two experiences. A uh, lot of these disruptions will happen when the two categories which are well known uh, will merge with a new kind of product innovations on this. And I think in next three to five years time, um, my, my estimate is that, you know, we will have at least some very interesting disruption in the food category and also in the bakery in, in this line. <laughs> now just talking about some of the consumer trend and I will quickly run through this. Uh, what we know that two out of three consumers are interested in the baked goods with the health benefits. Uh, and, and, and the key opportunities which consumers are looking for on this, definitely one is all about the energy. Second is about the weight management. And third is all about the digestive health. So these are the three big uh, health benefits which typically consumers are looking for. Uh, and the new one which will, which will get added and which uh, Dr. Krishna also spoke quite a lot is all about the immunity, immunity benefits. So these are the you know, key health benefits which consumers are looking for. Uh, in the bakery products. Uh, and then, you know, in terms of the functionality, uh, which is all about the functional benefits and functional in ingredients on this, uh, definitely the ingredients play a big role. So how, how can the better, healthier ingredients can get into the bakery product on this? And then immunity, in fact, uh, you know, based on the recent research of last year, about 60% of the consumers are looking for health benefit from the food product what they consume actually. And interestingly, you know, some of the insights which are coming out is that having something like your, you know, medicine or tablets or uh, some kind of product, which is not a part of the daily habit, 
having that for immunity versus you know having the food products which are already having the immediate benefit definitely the preference from the consumer side is for the second one where no change in the habit is required whatever products they are consuming are equally acceptable but also giving the healthier benefit on that so these are the things which are going to be very critical going forward on this uh in terms of the future i think uh, i have spoken a lot about it right uh, again it is based as of now a lot of focus on the sustainability uh, free from xyz right better for you ingredients a lot of those things are basically the things we you know which are being worked by the bakery industry today uh in the immediate future what do we see that uh, you know uh, different kind of healthy permissible indulgence is going to be one big uh, category or sub category within the bakery where an industry is going to be working on on this and then beyond the immediate future right how do you basically personalize the experiences of the bakery product how do you really get into some of the upcycle ingredients from the sustainability point of view nutritional with clinically proven health benefit a uh, lot of these uh, doc also spoke about it but the last piece is very specific and i can see that you know some some of the innovations are already happening in the market in this line which is about very age specific innovations for the kids and women and aging population but a lot more work will happen on this with a truly delivered clinically proven benefit on this now uh next two or three slides uh, i just want to expand on in terms of some of the key challenges which are being faced by the bakery industry uh, and the intent and idea here is to talk about it so that you know the audience who are there uh, in this webinar can think about these are the opportunity areas uh, which can be picked up and what kind of solutions can be provided to the industry on this so first one is all about you know uh, from the technology point of view the the baking process and the production thing which is there how can this be more effective and efficient actually right and what are the possibilities and opportunities which are there in terms of the automation in the bakery industry and how can today's uh, technologies in terms of artificial intelligence uh, to the uh, you know some of the new things which are coming up can be utilized in the baking industry to make the process more efficient how can some of the things uh, which are being talked about as a part of uh, making the process more effective more efficient process capability how all these thing can be done so that you know two things first first is all about uh, the cost of production can come down number one and number two the the production can happen in a much more sustainable manner so i think these are the two big challenges for the industry today and i see that you know whosoever is will you know uh, work on this and also crack it uh, will be the, basically the leader in the industry on this second is all about the sustainability on the product and packaging again lot has been talked about on this um, and this is going to be one of the key requirement not purely from the industry point of view but also industry doing good for the consumers um, uh, you know so this is going to be one of the key requirement on this other is all about you know in the bakery industry we do have certain by product uh, some of the scraps which basically come out how do you basically continually work to reduce the wastage and some of the wastages which are coming how can these wastages be converted to the you know some kind of value added product so that you know effective uh, utilization of this will lead to the reduced cost for the industries other thing is all about the food safety uh, without any element of doubt the processed food has to be safe from all angles and it has to be safe not only in terms of producing in the factory but when consumer is opening the pack and consuming it uh, within the shelf life the product has to be really safe uh, and for that some of the bakery products which are with intermediate moisture think about cake think about croissa think about bread uh, which are with you know like bread think about is about 38 to 40% kind of moisture on this what do we do on this in a manner so that product become much more safer what kind of manufacturing system and processes which you need to use so that that itself can basically give the product which is very safe not about adding lot of preservatives in the product but in another manner making the product safe uh, from the process point of view in the unit to the packaging which has to be used 
to the distribution, the way it has to be managed and handled in the supply chain. So a lot of those things will, will be critical for the industry on this. Other is all about, you know, in the, in the uh, food product, a lot of ingredients which are used are agro commodities. And a lot of issues in terms of the way the practices are there in India today, uh, the, the uses of pesticides, herbicides, right? A lot of those things uh, create some of the problems for the industry. And how do you really basically moderate? How do you really regulate these things so that the product which is coming out is definitely well within the you know, acceptable criteria? Next is all about the raw material. Uh, and without any element of doubt, right? The quality of the product which you're getting is function of the quality of the raw material which you're using on this. Uh, wheat flour is one of the key ingredients today in, in bakery. And unfortunately, you know, in the, the way the land holding is in India today for the farmers, uh, the agro practices which are used, the quality of the wheat which we get, uh, first is lot size is very small. And number two is that the quality within the lot also varies a lot on this. And hence, you know, having a manufacturing process which is more stable, more consistent, which can give more consistent quality product be becomes a significant challenge. And then, we, you know, the industry has to basically work a lot in terms of some of the processing ads which can be added to the process itself in terms of the baking. So, so it is critical that, you know, what do we do on this? Is there any possibility of having a much more consistent quality raw material for the industries is one of the key thing on this. Other one is all about fluctuating raw material prices, which, which impacts the uh, cost of the goods, which we make and sell to the consumers is always a challenge for the industries on this. Now talking about the next one, this is very interesting because when you talk about the consumer trends, right? And insights, according to me, all these things are basically basis what has happened in the last two to three years time. And typically, right, a uh, lot of development and innovation happens based on the consumer trend and insights, which is nothing but the culmination of last two to three years, how the consumer is looking for some of the things and also some of the things which are happening in the uh, food processing industry in terms of the product innovations. But here we're talking about creating the future, right? Insights probably may not help all of us to create a future which could be three to five years down the line. And hence, what are the basically processes and technologies um, which has to be used to have the foresight which can help us in catching on upcoming opportunities ahead of the time on this. Healthier ingredient and nutrients in the baking process has been talked about on this. And last one is all about the technology innovations. Uh, baking technology has been there for ages. A lot of work is happening on that, but I think the need of the hour is that how can this technology innovation be taken to the next leap and really basically give very significant advantages on the product in terms of the um, uh, lot of things which we spoke in the previous slides, starting with the duality of the experiences. Uh, how can two different technologies which are used in the food processing industry can come together to create something very innovative actually. So a lot of those things are required on this, right? So that was all from my side. And a uh, lot of these things which I spoke as a challenges today are definitely very significant opportunities in the baking industry. And, uh, and a lot of these futuristic innovations, uh, which we talked about, uh, will also depend a lot on these challenges, which are there, how one can take up these to resolve and then move ahead on this. So with that, uh, this is the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Mr. Neva. Undoubtedly, that was a really thought-provoking uh, presentation, uh, taking us through the innovations in bakery products and the challenges uh, what the industry faces right now. Um, thank you for taking us through right through the evolution of the bakery, bakery industry that goes back to 4,500 BC. And Mr. Neva has also spoken about the uh, uh, the big opportunity what India and Nigeria market has uh, with the uh, biscuit industry particularly in the coming years and the macro snacking industry which is about 11 billion US dollars right now is projected to go about 23 billion uh, US dollars in that uh, the bakery industry uh, share uh, has the potential to go up to 13 million US dollars uh, within a period of five to six years which is uh, currently 7.5 US million dollars. 
uh, globally uh, and uh, in India as well, uh, the industry is dominated by the biscuit category, uh, accounting almost 55 to 60 percent as per his uh, uh, views. And he also spoke about the particularly about bread and biscuit uh, evolving market and the factors uh, that uh, drive it. And uh, he also make us uh, aware about the different segments in the bakery industry, particularly particularly the uh, six segments, wherein uh, common consumer language we can call it as biscuit, crackers, tea biscuits, uh, sandwich cream, field field cookies, and health biscuits. Uh, and he will give some inputs on the technology uh, side uh, segmenting you know, based upon the hard dough and the soft dough or short dough uh, and the way that it is formed uh, uh, in the uh, industry. Uh, he also uh, spoke about how the work from home has shaped the trends uh, resulting in the different uh, needs of, from the consumers and uh, he has emphasized that uh, texture and test uh, rules the market for the consumers uh, pr priority in choosing the different uh, bakery products and uh, uh, bringing uh, the global premium products uh, of uh, e-commerce has played a vital role. Uh, in bringing the uh, different products into the shelf of the uh, market or to the consumer's table. Uh, he also uh, talk about the flavors and uh, uh, informed that Choco uh, tops the uh, current uh, flavor uh, choice. And there is a big scope for the different flavors like Malcha, Pineapple and other stuffs. And uh, there is a big innovations going on in the Chizo Bakery uh, category. And uh, the survey what uh, consumer says that out of two to three consumers, uh, uh, they prefer the health, uh, healthy uh, bakery products uh, and uh, mostly the weight management, di the digestion and energy are the preferred this one. And he spoke about the challenges, uh, particularly uh, reducing the processing time and uh, uh, application of automation and artificial intelligence uh, has a long way to go in the industry. And uh, food safety, of course, was and is a major concern uh, for the safety of the consumers. and. Uh, utilization of the byproducts uh, should be emphasized on and uh, of course the fluctuation in the raw material quality and the uh, uh, prices of the raw material plays a very vital role in uh, controlling the prices and the uh, quality uh, consistently so i think uh, with this i thank uh, mr sudhir nima for his time and uh, vast uh, information about the evolution uh, uh, market of the vacancy you have given through uh, to all the audience here sir thank you very much uh, we, we indeed are grateful to you for your time and patience thank you sir uh, moving forward, uh, the next speaker of the day, uh, Mr. VVS Mani, uh, Director, Operations, Univic India Private uh, Limited, Bangalore. Uh, he's a food technologist, uh, being a uh, Master of Food Science uh, from CFTRI uh, from 1987 to 89 batch. And uh, further, he has done the business management from the Narsi Monji, uh, Dubai. Uh, with an, uh, 33 uh, years experience in the baking industry, having worked with uh, big multinational companies like Britannia uh, in the different uh, factories of Britannia in Pune, Chennai, and uh, also uh, regional uh, standards he was also the regional standards manager with uh, NPD. Uh, he has also international experience uh, having worked with Tiffany's Food Limited uh, in UAE, uh, wherein he held the positions of plant manager, uh, factory development manager, and the purchase manager. Currently at Unibic, uh, uh, he has served uh, this uh, plan for uh, over 13 years as a director of operations and his involvement is right from the manufacturing, quality, innovation, cost reduction, strategy, projects, business development and process. Of course, uh, we were uh, um, lucky enough to have him visit uh, Mr. Mani at his operations and no doubt uh, uh, that is one of the biggest plants uh, we have come across in the cookies market uh, in India. So with this, uh, I invite uh, Mr. Vivas Mani to speak on the topic innovations and entrepreneurship in uh, the baking industry. Sir. Thank you, Dr. Alok. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ashutosh, uh, Dr. Alok, Dr. Nandini Shetty, <coughs> Dr. Mali Krishna. Thank you so much. Um, it's a privilege and honor to uh, you know, be associated with this. Um, it's interesting that to, to speak after the stalwarts in the industry to speak and then it could be a little insipid uh, as a presentation so you may kindly pardon me if it is safe and uh, i'll probably put on put off my video and then we'll get on with the presentation yeah
You able to see the screen? No, sir. Yes, yes, Mani. Yeah. Yeah, they can't see. Them. But it's still here. It's screen. The slides are not visible, sir. Your slides are not visible, Mr. Mani. Yeah. Is it no? Is it okay now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. You can. Thank you so much once again. Mani, you can enlarge the screen. Huh? Your slides. Are you able to hear me and see me as well? I mean, hear me at least and then see the slides. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Yeah. I mean, uh, both Dr. Murali Krishna and uh, Sudhir had you know spoken at length about the various technical aspects of the products and uh, you know the business and the industry as such in the bakery. Uh, so I'll just very briefly touch upon some of these things and then get on with more of entrepreneurial possibilities in terms of the industry. So we talked about the the global bakery industry being you know about 430 billion us dollars or something like that growing at about 10 percent and in india it's growing about five percent globally and then in india it's about 10 percent or more than that you know it's almost like 12 percent nowadays and in terms of the lakh crores if you want to look at it i mean uh, you know it's about 30 lakh crores globally and uh, bread is quite big in global uh, market compared to biscuits and uh, you know in india it's, it's the other way you know it's it's biscuit is much bigger and uh, there's a huge possibility uh, further as we go, you know, forward. And the per capita consumption, Sudhir had actually mentioned about it, and in India is very, very low. It's about something like close to two, two, two and a half kgs or something like that, compared to the big, big countries uh, where it's about, you know, ten to fifteen kilos and all that. And so that's that's a huge potential which is available in uh, in India, you know, in terms of the consumption and the growth of the uh, industry. Uh, since I think Dr. Murali Krishna has you know, dealt with a lot of bread and stuff like that, so I will concentrate more into the biscuits, cookies, and the cracker segment. And uh, Sudhir also had talked about a lot of bread and other associated bakery products. <clears throat> and in terms of the innovations, I mean, uh, Sudhir also talked about the various uh, you know, facets of the business. So, I mean, the, the industry has uh, seen a lot of innovations across the, the spectrum, across the gamut of each activity of the the, uh, you know, the bakery industry starts with the bulk handling i mean i remember you know in, in about 20 years before in britannia you know we used to be very conservative 20 30 years ago 20 25 years ago uh, when parley used to be you know much much ahead in terms of innovations in terms of bulk handling you know they had you know you know bulk handling you know something like three to four decades ago itself you know and then it constantly kept evolving and so there are a lot of innovations which has happened in mixers. You know, you have continuous mixers these days, and then big, big capacities with various kinds of automations. And then you have the SCADAs, and then you can get the entire data with artificial intelligence, and uh, you know, <clears throat> tying up with uh, your, your uh, you know, systems, and get the entire data as to you know what goes into each batch in in, in terms of each ingredient, and uh, you know you can analyze it and look at the variances and you know control the quality and the costs, uh, you know, and thereby you know in a very very efficient manner. In terms of the forming of the the the, the products, you know, I mean, uh, as Sudhir correctly mentioned, you know, there are a lot of rotary molders and rotary cuts and wire cuts and deposits. Unibig, you know, we have, we have specialized in wire cut, uh, you know, cookies. I mean, uh, uh, in terms of uh, entrepreneurial thing, which you know, which we'll talk about subsequently. You know, Unibig was one of the earliest ones to actually get into a tunnel oven. You know, in those days, about uh, you know, 18 years ago, when you know, even the big players, you know, were hesitant to get into, um, you know. Uh, that kind of a thing rather than getting into they were into more of rack ovens and you know doing batch process and all that so of course we, we did start on a very humble uh, very small uh, line but that's the way you know we, we could uh, envisage you know the, the possibility of uh, you know the cookies getting into mainstream and the cookies have been growing much more than the biscuits you know in the country and uh, yeah and then you also have this deposited cookies and other which hasn't been become very big except for the niche small players and you know very very uh, expensive cookies and stuff like that and of course there are a lot of other auxiliaries like you know cream sandwiching you have you know starting from those days of quality creaming machines which which you run about 400 450 you know sandwiches per minute to those peters at p22s and p24s which could run about um, you know 900 to 1000 you know sandwiches per lane and uh, you know then these days you have these cookie cappers i mean it's been there for quite some time of course but then the, the usage of cookie cappers have you know uh, um, become much more these days even for regular you know uh, reasonably you know not very fragile cookies i mean it's hitherto you've been used mainly for the cookies which are very very fragile where you just 
don't want to take it into an offline or a magazine feed and all that so it just gets fed online with creams and then you flip this you know at other base shell and then you know you just sandwich and stuff like that in terms of the oven yes there has been huge uh, uh, technology improvements and innovations and uh, you know there have been a lot of hybrid ovens with specialty ovens with uh, you know heat uh, conservations and heat you know recirculations and stuff like that and uh, i mean there's been a huge amount of work which has gone into the oven uh, technology you know i mean that's a subject by itself and uh, yes in terms of packing i mean i recall the days uh, some 33 years ago in in the bombay branch when we used to have those four grow machines and use those wax wrappers you know and uh, uh, you know, uh, run it about 60, 70 speeds. And uh, I mean, there'll be water nearby because of the cooling required. And, you know, <laughs> there's always a risk involved. And I mean, you could not, you know, really scale it up, you know, can't make it massive. The number of machines required were huge and uh, stuff like that. And then, you know, and then the days have come and then the things have become into the floor apps. And at high speeds, you have the low temperature films, you know, mm, uh, uh, you know, high speed films, which, which could run at about, you know, 50, 60 uh, meters per minute linear speeds and stuff like that. Uh, so people run at about, you know, 400, 500, 600 packets per minute, etc. I mean, depending on, of course, on the speeds of the, and the size of the packs, you know, I mean, um, so that, that's why we talk in terms of linear speeds. So that's, that's come a long way, you know, in terms of these. And uh, yeah, in terms of each of these, I mean, these are applied in each of these uh, segments of the, the bakery, which is the bread, a cookie, cake, or a cookie rusk or pastries and cakes <clears throat> and uh, Sudhir also talked about the, the uh, innovations and improvements and continuous improvements in terms of the cost you know the lean sigma six sigma and you know uh, those kind of things have you know come a big way and uh, obviously with a kind of you know uh, increase in commodity prices and all that uh, most industries actually end up making the margins only from the the saving you know that, that you could make it you just can't keep charging to the consumer whatever you feel like um, I mean, a flavor company could actually jolly well come and say that, no, no, sir, the propelling, you know, propelling required has gone up and then you've got to shell out this much. And then, you know, these are new price from this month or next month onwards. So we just, we, the biscuit industry generally finds it very difficult and the biscuit cookie cracker industry. And uh, yeah, to a great extent, uh, some amount of weight reduction would keep happening. But uh, even that, for example, a company like Unibig finds it very difficult because, you know, it's, you're already under a premium uh, compared to the, you know, the market and the big players and uh, to, to charge further premium by you know increasing uh, the per kilo cost you know comes with uh, you know its own uh, risk so obviously the cost reduction and uh, lean management and uh, you know uh, high throughputs and uh, reducing the manufacturing costs you know in a big way you know uh, has been uh, the, the key thing in the last uh, you know few decades and more so in the last few years i would say um, so and then, of course, even things like innovation, the layout design, and you know, is it the smooth design? Then how do you cut costs in terms of the number of people? You're not doing double works, you know. You're not, you know, uh, going through the process again and again, and you're not doing offlines, you know, getting into online as much as possible, you know. And then, of course, at high throughputs, so you just balance the line, and then you know, get the entire outputs uh, packed at the same time, and then so the product is also not getting soggy, or you know, there's no, you know, pick up moisture, pick up the moisture, etc. So that's again a key thing in terms of. Uh, you know, cost saving and the improvement of the product quality and uh, giving the value premium uh, to the customer, which is the most important thing in terms of, uh, you know, uh, sustaining the business. And then uh, I think Sudhir and Dr. Murli also uh, mentioned about uh, some of these things in terms of the sustainability and then, uh, you know, free from recipes and people obviously want to have a gluten-free or a fat-free or a salt-free or, you know, uh, and things like that. <clears throat> so obviously, these kind of things have, you know, um, come into vogue now. And uh, you know, people also want to know that what what's it in the, in it. You know, apart from obviously, the taste is one of the most important things. So without taste, you know, um, uh, health without taste, I, I don't think the consumers are you know interested in. So obviously, health with taste is the, the key thing, which is uh, you know the, the mantra now. <clears throat> and uh, yes, I mean, obviously, regenerative agriculture and things like that are much more important in the West and then in India, it's still catching up. So that will take its own time. And uh, Sudhir also talked about, you know, the 3D footprinting and stuff like that, personalized stuff as we go forward. I think probably I'll just rush through these things, which may not be of, you know, uh, too much significance in India as of now, uh, but I, I, it's catching up, you know, obviously it's all catching up, uh, you know, as we go forward. Yeah, the European Middle East and the African countries have, you know, their own set of, you know, in, you know, uh, focuses in terms of the eco packaging and 
you know, holistic approach in terms of sustainability and stuff like that. And the Asia Pacific, you know, has a few more things in terms of the portion control sizes and, you know, um, better for your ingredients, etc. And uh, clean label is one of the things which is definitely, I think, uh, cutting across the, the, the global scenario, you know, that's, you know, becoming important. And people are interested in understanding, you know, am I eating something which is clean, you know, it doesn't have too many, you know, uh, artificial stuffs and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, what's a you know differentiation that one can have in terms of you know the product? You know, you know, it's not easy to differentiate you know completely you know all the time. But then, what's a differentiation that some you know some amount of you know, differentiation that we could bring on the table? You know, so that you stand out in the, in the marketplace. You know, as a as a crowded shelf on the crowded shelf. So it's it's not easy. But at the same time, I think that's that's one of the important things uh, you know in the business. For example, I mean, in when in Unibic, when we started the Unibic chocolate cookies, the center field cookies, you know, way back in 2009, around the Valentine's time, Valentine's Day, February, we were the first to start in India, you know, but we couldn't sustain it, uh, you know, into a massive one because we didn't have the wherewithal or the deep pockets to spend, you know. Um, of course, you know, ITC took over, uh, took, took, took the project up and then in a couple of years and then made it massive, you know, and then people also ask us, a lot of people ask us, oh, you also do a center build product, is it? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a shame or a sad thing, but then, you know, that's the way life is, you know. So, you know, you, we have to create the differentiation. For example, we do a fruit and nut, which is, uh, you know, uh, with a health, healthy product, but then it's, it's an intelligent product as well. So people want uh, people, you know, products which are healthy, but then, you know, it's, it's very tasty. You know, and, uh, and obviously, Fortinet is one of the stalwart products for us. So those are some of the things you know to, to try and do differentiation. And what are the benefits that you know that we could look at? I mean, obviously, you know there are a number, number of uh, nutritious, uh, nutritional ingredients that could be added, and um, you know to, to make the product uh, much more healthier. Uh, I mean, regenerative agriculture and stuff like that will will it take you know its own time. You know, uh, but it's just catching up, and it's going to. Uh, you know, be the in thing as of now. And uh, Dr. Morley Krishna also talked about the carbon footprint. Yes, I mean, that's going to be a key thing. In India also, it's just become, uh, you know, a really important thing. And uh, the businesses could actually, you know, get broken uh, or, you know, made or broken, you know, if, if these things are not met as you go forward. And the water, again, is a, you know, such an important thing, you know, I mean, the water table you know many factories you see that you know they, they just go on deep you know digging the bore wells you know deeper and deeper and then you know it's it's always a threat so i mean obviously things like rainwater harvesting and you know uh, having the water table right and maintaining it you know it's just, i mean a lot of uh, technologies have come in terms of using the etb waters for you know uh, recirculations in terms of flushing the toilets and you know for the landscapes and stuff like that so that the water table is maintained and then you know many many companies are beautifully doing this and uh, so i mean that's that's going to be the key as you go forward i mean you know there's a saying in tamil that you know if there's no water there's no world i mean you know so obviously that's it's a key thing <clears throat> yeah i mean uh, as you've gone into this pandemic uh, uh, couple of years there's a lot of uh, products with immunity you know dr murli krishna specifically talked about those things in terms of the zincs and the vitamins and the seleniums and you know those trace minerals and a lot of things. Um, so I think uh, it, it took a huge uh, leap in the, in the first year, probably, if I say, if I may say so, and then uh, probably, you know, it's, it's not, you know, uh, catching up so much, you know, in the subsequent year, people are still wanting to have a you know, tasty product. One of the unfortunate thing is that many of these immunity products, you know, if it's not balanced right, may end up uh, becoming a little funny taste or a little bitter after taste and, you know, or a little bit insipid, uh, which, which the consumer doesn't like, you know, I mean, uh, <clears throat> So people end up, you know, using the easier routes like, you know, adding the vitamin C or some of these, you know, trace elements. <clears throat> um, but the taste has to be there. You know, that's, that's really critical. And of course, things like reducing the fat, reducing the sugar, you know, obviously the, you know, reduction of fat uh, is very, very interesting today. With the kind of prices of uh, the edible oils which has gone, you know, I mean, threefold or something like that, anyway, probably threatening to go even more. So a lot of technology is uh, going in terms of, uh, you know how to reduce the fat without actually you know affecting the texture affecting the taste uh, you know and uh, you know it it could, it could actually be even uh, uh, you know priced at a premium and uh, but also you know it may be used for the run of the mill products so you know that's that's what happens i mean many of the people would actually want to use uh, you eat a healthy product and then try to work out rather than just having an insipid uh, you know a healthy product so so not to belittle the importance of health but uh, you know it has to come with taste <clears throat> 
but yes the, the, the entire country and the global uh, scenario is moving towards healthy food production so <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, uh, Dr. Morley Krishna dealt with uh, in, in great detail in terms of the additives and people are looking for more natural products. They don't want preservatives. So, you know, people are talking about the free from this, free from that, you know, it doesn't contain. I mean, it, it, typically in, in the biscuit industry, except for some of these cakes and stuff like that, you know, the, the, the typical things with those kind of specific textures. Otherwise, generally, you know, hardly any preservative, no preservative is used, in fact. You just bake it, you know, and then you just make it at a very low moisture and very low water activity and then the product you know lives for quite some time in terms of you know uh, given a couple of years it's prime you know quite quite good to eat so many of the reasons for the growth in the category was also dealt with uh, you know in the, in the previous discussions and uh, you know the increasing disposable income of the consumers definitely is uh, prompting people towards more packaged foods and uh, you know so much so that if it is going to come with the health and taste together and uh, I mean, I've seen a lot of people say that, you know, I don't eat you know, biscuits these days, I eat cookies, you know. So there's also social strata involved. People also want to associate something with, you know, a lot of people say, that, no, no, we have graduated from Parleji. We use, you know, good day these days. We use Binanya, you know, a good day or, uh, you know, uh, ITC's uh, dark fantasy or Unibig fruit and nut or Unibig chocolate chip cookies or something like that. So, I mean, there's also a social strata involved in terms of, you know, people want to have, you know, a feeling that, you know, they're, they're graduated from, you know, the basic biscuits to, uh you know, higher cookies and stuff like that but then you know the, the basic biscuit is going to stay anyway you know i mean the value for money is always there much bigger in, in those products and uh, <clears throat> sorry yeah i mean convenience food is definitely uh you know a very important one i mean most of the bakery food is that way very very useful and convenient uh portion control pack has become a big thing uh, where people are able to you know carry a few packs you know keep fresh packs consumer friendly packs which don't go soggy you know you don't have to look for a jar and stuff like that so that's that's definitely becoming you know big um so i mean for example when you export to australia you know in certain countries you know portion control packs are really really big and um, also you know they also do the family packs you know the big family packs like a 500 kgs uh, 500 grams or a kg packs and all that you know and uh, so it is used uh, you know in a big manner in horeca you know both the ways you know the, the big packs as well as the small packs uh, so that's that's really useful. I mean, for example, all the coffee day cookies with portion control packs become such a big hit. You know, I mean, all the coffee day cookies sold in India, are, you know, are made by Unibig. Uh, even though our private label business is a very small one, you know, you know uh, compared to the Unibig branded product in the country. Uh, but uh, portion control pack is is, is is catching up as well. Yeah. And uh, as we talk about entrepreneurship in the you know the baking industry. Um, I mean that's a really inter you know interesting thing. Um, I mean if you really look at uh, you know what is the street food in the country? You know I mean street hawkers. You know if you look at the street hawkers uh, food, uh, you know something like thirty five lakh crores or something like that. You know on a, on a GDP of the country which is about I don't know one fifty crores or something. You know which is about twenty to twenty three percent of the business of the, the country. I mean when I'm saying talking about the GDP, the GDP encompasses the entire spectrum of food services you know i mean uh, pharma and you know um, all kinds of stuff and amongst that the food street food alone is, is something like you know 20 23 percent which is about 23 lakh crores uh, 35 lakh crores you know indian rupees which is absolutely massive so i mean so we are, we are talking about you know who is an entrepreneur you know how do you define one what are the prospects you know <clears throat> you know how do we uh, how these budding, you know, uh, food technologies and uh, entrepreneurs who can actually take up, uh, you know, uh, these enterprising models. And uh, we've seen a lot of people coming up these days. I mean, a lot of IITIMs and getting into the food business and uh, doing startups. Of course, the, the uh, startups uh, in food business has not, uh, you know, become so massive to the extent of unicorns. I mean, I think probably we have only a couple of unicorns or something like that in the food, probably that again in the service sector, uh, saving, uh, you know, Swiggy and um, Zomato. Uh, but you know the, the brick and um, mortar uh, uh, food processing, food manufacturing business also is catching up in a massive way. Yeah. So the, the entrepreneur is somebody who is you know um, you know wanting to take risk and then want to invest depending on the, the amount that he wants to invest. He or she wants to invest. And um, you know turning ability of uh, you know uh, turning ability uh, um, in terms of turning the ideas into actions. You know. Um, 
so there may be a lot of ideas with a lot of people you know making into fruition you know getting something out of it commercially viable and uh, i mean for example i used to tell that uh, you know if you look at the biscuit industry there may be so probably about 200 contract manufacturing you know uh, units in the country you know approximately more than that probably 300 and uh, probably about uh, about 5 to 10% of those factories would have actually been made specifically as a contract packing unit for some big players but an itc parle who it is but uh, you know a good 90% of the the remaining were actually thinking that you know i know to make glucose biscuit and i will start a biscuit factory and uh, so i'll make money you know uh, and then you know it doesn't happen that way you know it's not easy to sell you know a lot of people may end up uh, knowing how to make a biscuit but then to sell is not an easy job so you know that's where the the uh, the, the ideas turning into action you know and uh, uh, coming into fruition you know becomes very very important and uh, <clears throat> so the ideas could start at home level the entrepreneurship could actually start at a home level i think i have seen uh, i have heard and seen quite a few businesses who started at a very very small level i think probably mrs bector started at such a level i have seen uh, a satay biscuit in, in pune you know uh, which of course withered into Uh, you know doldrum uh, subsequently but very recent but uh, the products were very good and they started on a very small level you know the, the mother actually had started something just started selling into the neighborhoods you know and then started making some good money and then they started scaling up and then you know the rest is history you know uh, so th then then you know as this as the small uh, home uh, prepared prepared uh, baker bakery products you know could could find uh, you know consumers in the neighborhood and then they also get into small retailers nearby you know in the, in the, in the vicinity and then not uh, you know challenging a lot of distribution systems you know they are able to manage to distribute and uh, you know that's the next level and then people are also able to get into the bigger retailers and slowly get into the modern trade you know list them somewhere in a few you know um, uh, specific retails and uh, by by virtue of having a good product at a good value for money you know people are able to actually get into those modern trade and you know start growing their business you know and uh, and then of course you know doing uh, the, the business in general trade as well as a modern trade uh, makes it much more viable and the economies of scales uh, set in and then the the business gets uh, beautifully you know uh, turning into a great big momentum and uh, churning scale obviously starts giving you know the, the, the bottom line which again starts you know improving the top line and it's a beautiful cycle so e-commerce is another thing where a lot of entrepreneurs you know start getting into of course uh, that's also you know uh, the the Uh, risk involved in terms of <clears throat> you know the investment that one has to do upfront initially uh, but with the good network and uh, good product and the value for um, you know money product people are able to actually use this uh, platform beautifully and then people can actually end up uh, you know spending very small amounts to to you know several crores and uh, making into you know making small uh, rack ovens or you know um, small mixers and you know manually doing certain things and even packing manually and uh, then get on with larger factories as they grow <laughs> and then the entire product segment you know could be applied with these kind of uh, levels of uh, entrepreneurship and uh, you know so that's the way the business has been growing and then you know snack bar is another area which we have seen empty number of players there's been a mushroom growth in this field where people have been you know it, it started with a lot of chickies and you know those kind of nuts with jaggeries or liquid glucose and you know just just uh, cook it and then just you know uh, you know um, sheet it and then just uh, pack it you know and a good shelf life and then there's an excellent uh, value for money and then fantastic nutrition you know i mean if you look at a peanut and then you'll have such an accurate uh, protein and fat balances you know naturally uh, not that you'll have to add a lot of proteins additionally of course the protein quality you know could of course uh, be different from you know product to product but uh, that's the way the snack bar you know business has uh, mushroomed in the country and uh, i think quite a few players including britannia had done some you know a snack bar uh, venture into some 10 15 years ago something like that but you know it's probably some certain thing technologies are too early you know for the time sometimes you know and uh, so you know it will take time but then that that's going to be here for sure i mean yoga for for instance you can see you know it started in a very very small you know very small room kind of a stuff or something like that and then it's grown into a massive business and then still going forward uh, into a, in a massive uh, you know business and then uh, technologies are also you know changing into a lot of uh, chewy cookies soft cookies which either to in india you know it's still even now it's it's not a big business um, but i mean india you know people expect people, you know product to be crispy you give you know biscuit or a cookie or a cracker to anybody you know obviously then you ask them you know how is it the first thing you know probably the first thing which will come out is yeah it's good what is good it's crispy you know so people associate something which is not crispy as something old soft gone case i mean it's expired or something like that 
that's that's the psychology that you know the indian uh, you know consumers have you know uh, grown with but that's changing a lot of people are interested in soft cookies i mean you know you just have a uh, nice soft cookie just microwave it or just you know put it in the oven for a few seconds and then take it on the take eat that cookie fantastic you know chocolate cookie or something like that so that's catching up but these are happening much more in the the small uh, outlets where people are able to do niche products uh, where people uh, uh, sell cookies you know at uh, something like anywhere between 500 to 500 rupees 2000 rupees a kilo and things like that which is not easy to scale up you know obviously you can't expect great volumes on this but of course it these things uh, you know create brand value uh, you know so a lot of uh, small players have been doing this you know as part of their retail outlets and stuff like that. and then they also keep you know proliferating those number of outlets in in a city and then you know across the various cities in the country and uh, yeah, I mean, the entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship could also be additionally used in, uh, uh, you know, specific differentiated products, you know, I mean, which is what is happening in a lot of people, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, it's, it's uh, got no, I mean, in, they'll just put a big no, and then there'll be some 10 things which will be said, you know, it's not there. They'll say there's no trans fats, there'll be no cholesterol, there'll be no, uh, you know, sodium, or less sodium, or there's no, you know, um, salt, sugar, you know, and things like that. So these things have caught up in a big way, um, you know, and uh, so that that's going to be, the future as we go forward people are expecting things which are cleaner uh, labeled and of course with a good taste and the investments as i said could vary from you know a few thousand rupees to several crores depending on the scale and uh, the, the most important thing would be a good quality product and uh, the capacity to distribute and sell you know so if you can't uh, distribute and sell the product you know a fantastic product is just you know uh, consigned to dustbin i mean it's it's uh it was it, they've seen it in many many products across the the industry in the last several decades and uh, so that's something which is very important of course it also can happen with the loss of focus or uh, lack of focus or you know the inability to focus on too many sku's and too many products that also could happen despite you know people having some distribution you know uh, uh, muscle and of course, the cost is the most important thing, uh, you know, for uh, the, the volume products and uh, for the niche products, of course, you know, people are willing to pay, you know, I mean, one cookie is also sold at 50 to 100 rupees and stuff like that, you know, in some, you know, some crazy outlets. So, so that's also there, but uh, that's, that's not going to scale up so easily. That's going to be a segment which is going to be there and then it'll keep growing. But, uh, you know, it, that's going to be a different segment compared to the value for money and, the you know, economies of scale products. And uh, I mean, it's also important to understand the, the kind of food waste which happens in the world and in India. I mean, I, I, I think that probably something like 15 to 17 percent of the food is wasted, you know, in the in the world. And I think India is also not very different from the, the global scenario. And if you really look at it, I think something like I don't know, 900 to 1,000 tons of product uh, biscuit, you know, uh, the the food is getting wasted, you know. And uh, probably if we end up saving those waste, you know, we can actually probably feed every single person on the globe. You know, I think it will translate to something like anywhere between 150 to 200 or 300 or even 400 grams of food over and above what people are already getting, you know, in terms of the food. So that's that's where the possibility is. And uh, <clears throat> so the, the street food, you know, if, if we are saying that it's about 20 percent of the Indian GDP, you know, uh, I mean, we all know that the street food has its own charm. It's, it's uh, you know, probably no overhead and obviously it's, it could be value for money and could be, you know, reasonably cheap. But, you know, some people are also ending up uh you know paying uh not so expensive but then you know a little premium value premium kind of products on the streets but then it also comes with its own you know inhibitions or the, the worries you know in terms of what could be the safety food safety uh, and stuff like that so that's that's probably where the potential for the, the entrepreneurs you know which where we, you know they could actually make a lot of products which are uh, you know uh, available um uh, it, it also looks like it's fresh it's not you know i mean the soft cookies for example you know this is a huge area where people maybe you know made to look like it's it's a fresh product you know we just bake it and give it and it's warm and it's soft and gooey and then you know it's it's uh, it's, it's appreciated and uh, so there is a huge possibility in terms of tapping this in terms of structured entrepreneurship uh, you know um, you know uh, coupling with the, the you know the knowledge of food technology and uh, you know marrying that and uh, making it a win-win situation there's a huge scope for a lot of enterprise that way and uh, in terms of the unicorns yes you know there's a huge number of unicorns in india uh, but in the food space it's, it's pretty low uh, though it's it's quite low in terms of the service it's only in the service sector now i'm sure that in the uh, you know um, brick and mortar uh, businesses as well it is going to mushroom in the you know coming years um, 
and then there are a lot of possibilities that the governments have been you know uh, you know sub, you know supporting the the businessmen the startup uh, businessmen and uh, so people can look at all these possibilities of you know uh, msme uh, facilities <coughs> A lot of loan facilities are available, and uh, I'm sure CFTR must be working very closely with a lot of startup companies. Uh, and then you know, it, it, it is you know not just a bakery; it could be for any any food product. Uh, you know, the, the, <coughs> the facilities are available, and the people could make use of those kind of things. And uh, and inter interestingly, MSME is one of the massive you know businesses in the country. I think something like close to 45 percent of the businesses or something like that are you know in uh, in msme you know and uh, so that that really you know uh, shows you know the kind of potential that you know budding entrepreneurs could actually set themselves up you know um, of course the market is challenging but uh, there's a possibility that you know people with clear focus could uh, you know win in these areas you know so there have been a lot of facilitations in terms of this you know i think uh, anyway the kind of uh, <coughs> internet facilities and the, the you know information available i think you know most of the people will be aware of you know these kind of things and uh, you know <clears throat> so a lot of institutions banks you know uh, have been uh, you know facilitating this and uh, with very exciting very very attractive uh, you know uh, facilities which which uh, you know a good payback and uh, so i think the people can utilize uh, these things in a big way and uh, you know make india uh, you know the, the st startup in, you know startup culture you know which is already caught up in india to make a, to make it massive you know and uh, so i will wind up with this and uh, if there are any questions uh, we can take or we can leave it at that Sorry, you are on mute actually. I'm sorry about that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mani, for the insights into the entrepreneurship uh, talk. Uh, basically, Mr. Mani spoke about the unit operations and the machinery that uh, are available in the industry and the scale uh, at which they are available for the different uh, categories of the businesses. Uh, he emphasized that the profit right now the bakery industry is making is through savings as the cost of the raw materials are fluctuating and the cost and that need not to go to the consumers. Uh, so by different uh, plant uh, designs, uh, minimizing the processing cost and all those are certain um, efforts what the uh, industry can make to, uh, to make the profits more. Uh, he also uh, took us through the regenerative farming and the importance of reducing carbon footprints and the uh, uh, healthier options uh, uh, rather than the healthier cookies is what the consumer uh, looks right now and uh, the different factors what drive this uh, cookie category are uh, higher disposable income, healthy, uh, healthier snack options people looking for, the convenience uh, category and the food on the go demands of the consumer. So the, these are uh, the drive factors which are taking this category uh, up front. And uh, he says the packaging uh, of the unit uh, in uh, different packs like family packs with the different uh, varieties of cookies is also uh, need of the day and the consumers demand so. Uh, he emphasized that the uh, students should look for taking up the entrepreneurship in baking industries as uh, someone can uh, take risk and uh, then only he can enjoy the most of the rewards. So he also explained the different uh, government uh, assistance which can be taken up by the uh, entrepreneurs uh, through subsidies. Uh, there are different uh, facilities from NABR, uh, NABARD and the MSM schemes. Uh, so, so thank you, Mr. Mani, for uh, the valuable inputs of your talk. Uh, now I invite uh, the Secretary of the Association, uh, Dr. Nandini Shetty, to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you very much, sir. As we have come to the end of today's program, it gives me immense pleasure to propose the vote of thanks. First and foremost, I would like to thank Director CSIS, CFTRI, and Director DFR, 
a DRDO, DFRL, MISO for extending their constant support and guidance to the association. Next, I would like to thank all the eminent speakers who gave a wonderful talk today, and I'm sure all the members who have attended this talk would have thoroughly enjoyed it. First, I would like to talk, uh, thank Dr. M. M. Krishna for throwing light on the evolution of baking technologies and changing perspective of consumers regarding the bakery program. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, next, I would like to talk, uh, thank Mr. Sudhir Neema for briefing us about the technology innovations and challenges in bakery industry and how bakery products we can be made into a health and convenience food for the option of the uh, health conscious consumer. Thank you very much, sir. Next, I would like to thank Mr. VVS Mani for enlightening us on innovation and entrepreneurship in baking industries and how any individual's innovative idea can be converted into the industries and also briefing us on the various themes and investment. Thank you very much, sir. Next, I would like to thank our uh, president, Dr. Alok Kumar Srivatsava for briefing about AFSTI and welcoming all the me uh, members. Thank you very much, sir. I would also like to thank Dr. Ashito Shinanda for introducing the speaker. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank all of my Central Executive Committee team, composing of Dr. Alok Srivatsava, Dr. Bhaskar N, Dr. Uday Annapuri, Dr. Ashito Shinanda, Dr. Vika Singh Chauhan, Mr. Basuraj Mundalmani, Dr. Nilesh Lele, Dr. Bridges Srivatsava, Dr. Hem Bhatti, Dr. Dinakar Kamde, Dr. Suresh Sakri, Dr. Navin Shivanna, and permanent invitee, Dr. P.S. Negi, who have extended their wonderful support for carrying out this webinar. I thank each and every member of my team. Thank you. My special thanks are due to previous CEC member and all the APSTM members and all the chapter president and secretary, executive members in supporting and attending this program. I thank the staff of AFSTI under the uh, Mr. Shankarappa, Mrs. Sandhya, Mr. Vishwanath, Mrs. Suvarna, Subramani, and I would also like to thank Mr. Manohar from Computer Section CFKRI for helping us in the technical assistance. Thank you very much. I wish to thank head and staff of CFTRI, DFRL, and University of Mysore. I wish to thank all the participants who are, have attended this program and made it successful. And I would like to bring to the notice that we have almost had almost 1,000 views uh, during the webinar. I thank every participants, academicians, industry personnel, staff, students, and all the members who have made time to attend this program. Thank one and all. Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Alok, 